but is that Plus practical? Drug use, multiple reprimands, criminal charges, and a sure possible removal nice. from the bench. The WREG investigators are uncovering more about Shelby County Criminal Court Judge Melissa Boyd and what's happened since she was elected back in 2022. Stunning revelation. It's not stunning. A black not woman in all. A black woman judge in trouble. A black woman, uh, a a black elected official, <laughs> just generally. Yeah, no, nah, this <laughs> is the sky's blue. Complaints of drug use, multiple reprimands, criminal charges, and a possible removal from the bench. The WRG investigators are uncovering more about Shelby County Criminal Court Judge Melissa Boyd and what's happened since she was elected back in 2022. Stunning revelations, and our chief investigator, Jessica Gertler, shows you the pictures, the data, and the records that she found that have landed Judge Boyd under a judicial conduct and criminal investigation. Oh, Inside to a one poplar on the seventh floor. Uh, Any objection, Mr. Hall? No objection. Miss Becky, you next. Excuse me, could they be doing first, okay? Yes, ma'am. Criminal Court Division 9, where Judge Melissa Boyd presides. Mr. Lewis, who will dismiss your case? Yes, uh, ma'am. Successful completion of the version. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Hall, look, Mr. Hall. Hall, it's a hall, okay? <laughs> She hasn't been on the bench, though, in almost a year. Eight months after she assumed office, she was reprimanded, suspended, then indicted on criminal charges. We've done everything we can possibly do. And recommended for removal by the State Board of Judicial Conduct. By its vote, the board had determined that this pattern of unethical conduct could not go on indefinitely. A move that hasn't happened in 30 years. The board got involved in May 2023 when they reprimanded Boyd for wearing a judicial robe when she tried to get donations for a school. Soon after came a suspension after Boyd's former campaign manager, who she had a personal relationship with, alleged the judge was drinking and doing drugs. She sent the board this photo she took in December 2022, claiming she found this plate in Boyd's apartment with a spoon and a white powder formed into a single line. She says Boyd admitted it was cocaine and has used cocaine off and on for the last year. That year being when she ran, was elected, and presided as judge. The board says they've made multiple attempts to get Boyd treatment, a professional assessment, and a psychiatric evaluation, but she didn't comply. Meanwhile, <laughs> this could not go on forever, just half a decade or so. <laughs> this is enough. <laughs> Oh, shit, man. I mean, come on, man. These white people have given her so much leeway. They wouldn't give a white judge this much leeway. Usually you can't oh, be no a way. judge when you're in rehab. No, yeah. White judge would have been out of there, man. It's a different standard. They hold, they hold us to a different standard, man. Yeah, they, they treat y'all like children. They they know they're like, all right, we got to give these people like nine lives, basically, because they got to fucking take at least eight of them. <laughs> she says Boyd admitted it was cocaine and has used cocaine off and on for the last year. That year being when she ran, was elected and presided as judge. The board says they've made multiple attempts to get Boyd treatment, a professional assessment, and a psychiatric evaluation, but she didn't comply. Meanwhile, a criminal investigation was underway. The DA here, Steve Mulroy, had a conflict, so that's why our office is here. The district attorney from another district was brought in. In December 2023, Boyd was indicted for coercion of a witness and harassing her campaign manager. Court records show she got out on a $5,000 bond with conditions like weekly call-ins, staying away from the alleged victim, and random drug screenings, like the one she took on March 12th at Aver Health. The website states they test for common drugs in urine, oral fluid, hair, and sweat. Court records state the results were several times higher than federal workplace cutoff values for both <laughs> alcohol. <laughs> alcohol. I mean, that don't stay in there long, huh? Uh, Damn, man. If I'm wrong. Um, what do you do when you got to get a protection order from the judge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. Man, look, at, look how hard Blythe's got to run these the people. This is nuts, man. We got to have like <laughs> two eyes on you at all times, period, or else like you'll just do some shit like this. Shit. 
Man, um, and listen, I didn't know about it. I just I, this wasn't one of the ones I saved. I just saw it when I went to the home screen. This is absolutely this is absolutely what we would expect from assisted judge. They test 100%. for common drugs in urine, oral fluid, hair, and sweat. Court records state the results were several times higher than federal workplace cutoff values for both alcohol and cocaine. In a statement, Boyd's attorney, Art Horn, says Boyd is committed to resolving her case and staying in recovery so that she can be in a healthy space. The Judicial Conduct Board says Boyd did check into a treatment facility earlier this year for what they called severe alcohol, cannabis, and cocaine abuse. There is more than enough to suggest that this particular jurist is unfit to sit as a criminal court judge in the state of Tennessee. The cocaine problem alone <laughs> is hugely problematic. According to Boyd's resume, she used to be an attorney. In 2015, we uncovered this complaint. The Supreme Court of Tennessee suspended her for practicing law because a father had paid her to help with the custody battle, but she never filed the petition. Boyd said she assumed it was filed and assumed he had received the refund from her business manager. Around that same time, she was running for Shelby County General Sessions Court. In 2022, she was elected to criminal court, and in her short tenure, she had about 500 dispositions, anywhere from guilty pleas to dismissals, diversion, and more. We have no indication that we're aware of that any of the cases that had previously been handled by Judge Boyd have any red flags or problems that would require us to reopen those cases. Since Boyd's suspension, yeah, Judge was Christopher Kraft has been calling said, her docket you know, while also working sure this. Act strange. In January, Judge Mark Ward was appointed to help. All the while, Boyd has continued to collect her salary, about $17,000 a month plus benefits. A legislative committee voted to remove her from the bench. A final vote should happen in the General Assembly soon. Jessica Gertler, WREG News Channel 3. I can tell you the WREG investigators will continue to let you know what else they find out. <sighs> Man. It's amazing. None of that calls the question into question her previous verdicts, but... <laughs> yeah, because it, 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 listen... If that was a white judge, it would be a thousand sun men free on the streets, man. Getting getting woken up out of sleep and then say, hey, man, you're free, man. How could you possibly <laughs> render a correct judgment when you're high on cocaine all the time? <laughs> Yo, man. It, it would, it, and, and if it wasn't, the NAACP would be protesting, man. To free all those dudes, man. Free all these criminals, man, that went through her court. See, the, the thing about this is, like, these Sun Sisters will claim, like, Sun men are exclusively the problem and they're higher educated and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, not really. Like, y'all are both, like, putting in the work to really fuck things up. But you got to excuse this sister. She came from the mean streets of the south side of Baton Rouge, yeah. you know. Yeah, do we have any, like, divesters in the chat that can speak on this? Like, this is just, like, par for the course. I feel like we see it every single yeah. show here. I was going to say that. I was about to say that, like... Just what you just said about how often do we see these sisters like in in the legal, the criminal justice system fucking yep. up like this. All the time, man. All the time. Like it's Yeah, I mean, they're not out here like killing people like some men are, but like, you know, for what you could expect a woman to behave poorly at, that's what Sun Sisters do. It's just like, you know, so... It's part of the problem. Yeah, they, yeah, they, like it's literally 50 50. They're not putting people in like tombstones and, and caskets, but like they're they, behaving as, as they, poorly as a woman could. They might as well put them in tombstones while they're letting all these clowns free. Right, right. That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. It's crazy, man. This is, this is, this, this woman, I mean, snorting coke, though, and having <laughs> somebody have a, restraining order against you like yeah really? i mean that means like she's at least like physically threatening someone right or or something if you got a restraining order right or like so it's like yeah we're talking about like like i mean this is <laughs> this is like unbelievable this is this is so i'm speechless man <laughs> 
I can't even like like I can't even this, like, dude, look. This is an example of communism on your doorstep. Yeah, this is this is wait, this wait, is wait, 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 wait. How is this an example of communism on your doorstep? These people are thinking with a communist mindset. I thought she was just having a good time and doing her hair, but it <laughs> no, look at a lot of these politicians, the things they're doing. They, I mean, they, they're thinking with a, a communist mindset. Like, if you dig deep into their ideologies and what they're doing, yeah, this is, this is a form of communism. Really? She may have been, you know, knocking back a couple of pints of vodka and snorting some coke and reading, you know, the communist manifesto. So wait, hold on. You're saying it's a communism problem, not a Savannah problem? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, a lot of these people are starting to adopt communist ideologies. The people, um, along with the people. The people are doing it also. And next thing you know, hence why your man, why your man uh, Putin came out and was just like, yeah, Jesus is black. What? Yeah, I'm what? You, what, what are you talking that? about? What? He what? Needs, he said listen, that? <laughs> get to give everybody a show. Oh, yeah, he's down with us, blah, blah, blah. Listen, I'm telling you, at the end of the day, that's what they're pushing for, to turn this country communist. Let me show you this one. To the I team now, Douglas County probate judge Christina Peterson lost her fight to dismiss most of the allegations against her involving judicial misconduct. Peterson faces 40 counts, accusing her of misusing her position and harming the public. Fox 5 team reporter Randy Travis first uncovered some of these incidents. He's here now with the latest. Randy. That's right, Courtney and Russ. Remember now, this case started off with 50 alleged violations, but in May, investigators dropped 10 of them. Peterson won and many of the rest also dismissed, but the Judicial Qualifications Commission said no. While running for probate judge in 2020, Christina Peterson posted a satirical, sometimes sexually graphic video of her playing a white man giving dating advice to a black woman. Around the same time, Peterson celebrated her birthday by posting her Cash App address on Instagram. If anyone feels like sharing their quarantine wealth, and she encouraged <laughs> this is a judge. This is a judge. We did this one? We did this uh, one back in the day. This is a judge. Quite nearly weep for my country sometimes. <laughs> this is a judge playing on the internet like a sixteen-year-old fucking schoolgirl and shit. Around the same time, Peterson celebrated her birthday by posting her Cash App address on Instagram. If anyone feels like sharing their quarantine wealth. And she encouraged people to come meet her at a local bar in the days after she won her primary election. And during the pandemic. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. By the Can way. you imagine her hearing your case? She said in the comments, if you coughing, you be, you better stay home. Jesus Christ. Her dude. giving you a fucking lecture about what's right and wrong before she fucks you in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You won't want to be a glider in front of this lady. You're just getting murked. You might get twerked on aggressively. <laughs> Come meet me at the bar <laughs> to celebrate me winning the judgeship. And this is the fucking fucking god. <laughs> Folks, this is the flyer. <laughs> She's giving out her cash app online and shit, asking for <laughs> donations and shit with thirst traps and shit. This is a yeah, judge. No. She's a kid. She's a kid. This is, this is, listen, I don't know which one is worse, man. Because <laughs> the other one is bad, but this is, I mean, both of them are just, it's like unbelievable. It leaves you speechless. I'm sure you can't find any more, though. Hashtag <laughs> address on Instagram. If anyone feels like sharing their quarantine wealth. 
And she encouraged people to come meet her at a local bar in the days after she won her primary election. All these social media posts have her in judicial hot water, accused of violating the judicial code of conduct, even though they happened when she was still a candidate. It's an interesting question. Can the state punish a judge for things said or done before they were sworn in? Judge Peterson says no and asks that most of the violations be dismissed. Instead, she got an answer that no judge likes to hear. You're wrong. In a 13-page order, the hearing panel for the Judicial Qualifications Commission rejected all of Peterson's motions, writing the Georgia Supreme Court has unequivocally held that the JQC's jurisdiction covers conduct undertaken while someone is a judge or judicial candidate. Her attorney, former JQC Chairman Lester Tate, disagrees. It's not the job of the JQC to, to be overturning elections. We contend that even if everything they say is true, it's still not a disciplinary offense. The order also leaves in place other disturbing allegations involving Peterson. Her decision to let seven people into the courthouse for a Saturday wedding even though the sheriff's office had warned earlier they didn't have staff to operate the security checkpoint. She put all of the employees that work in this courthouse and the citizens who would come that Monday morning at risk. Then there's Peterson's public dispute yeah, with her homeowners association, there. where she called one attendee a witch and offered the board a deal to dismiss a lawsuit she had filed. And the time she ordered this woman jailed for contempt for two days. P.J. Skelton asked to amend her wedding license after learning years later the true identity of her father. Peterson ruled she had lied on the initial application. I didn't have no thought in my mind. Like, she's a Montavious bunch of Skelton. In my mind at all. <laughs> no one told me what the fuck? <laughs> no one. I thought it was going to be an easy fix. If you read all of these uh, alleged violations, it paints a picture of a judge who is out of control. Well, that may be your take on it, but it certainly it was not the take on Christina Peterson when the people of Douglas County voted her into office as a probate judge. And next year, she'll be standing for election again. So if the people think that, that those judges are out of control, wherever they may be, they have the authority in the state of Georgia to vote those judges out of office. Meanwhile, the GBI continues investigating whether Douglas County employees misuse their purchase cards to buy personal items. I mean, Judge Peterson does doesn't have a P card, but she does have a county credit card. We found around $4,500 charged to USAA Insurance. Peterson did not provide records showing the county purpose for those charges. Her attorney offered no additional information. Wasn't it, is Judge Peterson worried at all about this GBI investigation? No, not at all. Peterson tried to appeal the JQC's decision directly to the Georgia Supreme Court, but that was also denied. She's now scheduled to go before the JQC to explain her actions and possibly face punishment starting on September 5th. She's preparing her legal brief on why it's not against the law to use, you know, city county money to get a BBL. She ain't, she ain't gonna face no punishment. No way. You don't think so? Nah. And, and by the way, hey, uh, it's me, Thomas, from Houston. What's I'm up, more, man? Yeah, what's up? I, I'm much more sober than I have been in the past. I actually wanted to, uh, I, I know, I, I don't, I have, I'm have. i late into the show. I didn't see the beginning, but I was going to ask your opinion on the uh, the bridge, the Key Scott Bridge. Oh, the Key Scott Bridge, man. I, I, I know you're familiar with Baltimore. I know you're familiar with the tourism. I've never been on that bridge, though, but I, I will say this. It looked like, man, just what happened happened. Like right. I'm not even gonna like lie. Like, like that's literally what what they say happened is literally what happened. Well, now it is what happened, but I I will say this: after a lot of like I, I did a lot of research into it, like just for one day, and I can't come to some nonsensical conclusion, but that's I will say. It, it it is divided. It is 50-50. Yeah. It, it, it's fifty percent. It's fifty percent accidental. It's fifty percent um, on purpose. The problem is that if you're going to say it's on purpose, you have to say why. And the reason why you can't say it, like you can't say it's on some 
terrorism against America because it's only one port of Baltimore. For example, I live in Houston. If you wanted to really do damage, like you go Houston, you go New York City, you can go Miami. And a lot of people don't want to talk about like which way, why. And there's and there's a there's a lot of high. Key hey, hold people. on, man. Let me let me stop you right there. We are gonna get into that a little later. I want to oh, okay. um, cook, cook, wait. cook on this judge, man. Oh no no yeah no no, no I I'll wait. I thought you were done with the show. I wanted to come in before you're done. So JQC yeah. he, investigators he, contacted the judge this year. The complaint says Peterson explained she thought that post was to her private personal page, and I was wondering on that day why I was getting cash app from people I didn't know. The JQC said in her Instagram bio, Peterson called herself judge-elect. If it was done in public, it's a cardinal violation, which is an intolerable uh, activity for a judge to do. A judge cannot stand up and say, I'm a judge, send me money. Even if she wasn't on the bench yet, <laughs> hasn't she made that Basic. post? Yes. Yeah. The complaint also says Peterson used her judge-elect status to encourage people to visit two restaurants. And on her Twitter page, she recorded a video offering relationship advice, calling someone a, quote, homeless sexual, and making reference to, quote, African-American male genitals. The JQC <laughs> called it, quote, inappropriate sexual commentary. Judge Peterson did not reply to repeated requests for comment from the Fox 5 I team. I'm grateful that the people of Douglas County elected me hmm. to serve as their probate judge. That is a big thing. Peterson already generated controversy before she took office, convincing commissioners to pay her more than her predecessor because he was not an attorney and she is. Peterson now collects $124,000 a year. Combine that with the money she's allowed to keep from fees paid for documents like marriage and birth certificates, and Peterson could make more than a state Supreme Court judge. Now those same justices will decide whether the JQC allegations are true. And if this broad makes 190, basically $200,000 a year. <laughs> she's out here acting like a jackass. Hey, ah! uh, real quick, have, have you noticed the theory with like, her, like someone like her, and then the the woman from uh, Dalton County. Exactly, I was about like, to say that. It, yeah, it, it, it seems or like Fanny, or just Fanny, Fanny, or, or yeah, Dalton, Kim exactly. Trowell, you know, or Kim but, Fox, or but I but I noticed Gardner. something though. You know what I think? You know, what's so funny. They're all attacking Trump, but they're using the Trump tactic where it's like I can do what I want because of the stipulations of how I got voted in. They want to spend that money. And the irony is, is like they're all against Republican shit. They're all against Trump. But they kind of use the same Trump tactics. I can just do what I want. Look at That's this. Kind of how it seems. The Senate team investigation found several people filed state bar complaints against a local county commissioner claiming they hired her as their lawyer, but she did no work on their cases. And there's more. The state bar disciplinary review board recommended that Rockdale County Commissioner Sherry Washington be disbarred because of some of those complaints. Well, senior IT reporter Dell Russell is here now with the story. Dale? Russ, these things happen like this sometimes. Our investigation began with just one complaint about Commissioner Washington from a woman in Covington, Georgia. But the more we looked, the more we found. I'm real mad. I am furious mad. I want my money. Tracy Belcher says she has good reason to be angry. In 2018, her parents, both diagnosed with Alzheimer's, began wandering their neighborhood. So they was walking up and down the street around, you know, the people's houses, which they didn't know no better. Home health care workers filed a report with the Newton County Sheriff's Office saying the couple had dementia and were not fit to be left alone. She was so weak. Tracy Belcher hired me. Sherry Washington, a lawyer who had successfully helped her on a previous legal matter. We really are going to bed every night trying to figure this out. That lawyer is also Rockdale County Commissioner Sherry Washington. Tracy Belcher wanted to become her parents' legal guardian. She paid Washington $3,000 to file the petition. What did you get for the $3,000? I got nothing. Nothing. She didn't answer no phone calls. I know nothing. So Tracy Belcher sued Sherry Washington's law firm. And when the case came to court, Washington failed to appear, according to court records. A judge awarded Tracy $3,000. It was August 2021. To date, she says she filed a bar complaint 
but hasn't seen a penny. We don't have no money, and she's still sitting on the commission board, getting paid, and we out here suffering. I'm not understanding. What do you say to Tracy Belcher? I wish her well. She says you took money from her and did no work. Ms. Washington, please. Our I-Team investigation found Tracy Belcher is far from alone. I was totally shocked um, at the case file. The size of it, the detail of it, I, I had no idea. In 2017, Deshaun Mayweather hired Sherry Washington to handle her divorce. She says she had a strong case, adultery. Her husband had fathered a child with his girlfriend and had taken nude photos and videos of Mayweather without her knowledge, according to a state bar disciplinary report. But there was one big problem. When the case came to trial, Sherry Washington didn't tell her client and didn't show up. Not once, but twice. Deshaun didn't know about the missed trial dates until she looked the case up at the courthouse. She discovered her attorney did not appear for trial. The judge denied Deshaun any spousal support or any of her husband's retirement savings and ordered her to pay his attorney fees, $5,000. What was your reaction? I cried. I was in Fulton County Courthouse and I cried. It's very hard to believe. It was an open and shut case. Deshaun ultimately sued Sherry Washington and won a judgment for $48,000 plus interest. To get paid, she had to garnish Washington's county commission salary. What do you say to these people who say Excuse that you me, took sir. their money and did no work? But Mayweather that wasn't white done. White woman looking she at her like, is it true? Georgia complaint. It's, it sounds very Tiffany like, Henry. Yes. It's like everybody, everybody, all these women are taking after Tiffany Henry and Fanny, and it's like that's the that's the that's the motive. Just do what you I want. I think these women getting. are just doing them. I don't think they're taking after. And I think this woman and the other woman and the other woman are just doing them. I don't think but they're no, happy in any other person. But no, but no, but no, but, well, okay, well, how about this? Not saying they're following Tiffany Henry, but it's a collective. They're just doing what they're going to do. It's assumed. It, yeah, it, 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 them, what does she and Tiffany Henry have in common? Because they, yeah, they, 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 they start, <laughs> keep, they start Keisha doing their thing. They don't care. I don't have to answer questions, right? She so, don't have to answer questions. She doing it, right? Salute, salute to um. That's what I see. Salute to Deluxe Two Four Seven, aka Calvin, aka the real MVP coming like, through. Are, once are, again, are we gonna right? act like there's not a common denominator? They're all doing what they want to do. It doesn't matter. Like even yeah. if Kinder, if even even if Tinder, Tiffany Hitter didn't exist, she gonna do that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Salute, salute right. the bugger off, man. Coming through, man. Gifting the membership, man. Y'all can hit that PayPal or that Cash App or that Super Chat if y'all want to, man. It's yeah, the only there's no law against this. PayPal and I. Yeah. there's no, there's no law against supporting <laughs> this channel, man. I can tell you that much, man. Y'all, y'all can support this channel, the only channel where you get this. I mean, there's no other place on the net where you can get this, and we struggling to get support let's see how many likes we got man um let's see how many likes we got man let's see if we got, got to 300 yet man um 301 okay that's good 300 likes man that's that's decent man let's go for 400 too man um you know what i will say though uh real quick y'all you ever notice how like ironically though they, they have the same response that like do like senators would have in the 70s were like is there any response? And then like she's just like, uh-uh, nothing. Like this is quiet. Like this yeah, is nothing. But that's the best to not say anything. She's she she's not giving you anything where you can latch on to where you can Which is say, right. Aha. Do that. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. this represents so really the exception to the rule there. Most of them are saying, like, I do my job, shit. Fuck. <laughs> He sued Sherry Washington and won a judgment for $48,000 plus interest. To get paid, she had to garnish Washington's county commission salary. What do you say to these people who say Excuse that you me, took sir. their money and did no work? But Mayweather wasn't done. She filed a state bar of Georgia complaint against Sherry Washington. In the bar complaint, Washington's lawyer argued she missed those trial dates because she didn't receive emails through the court system and due to administrative staffing difficulties. 
We examined all 286 pages and found two more of Washington's clients filed bar complaints. The bar found Washington did nothing in one case and took no action in the other. In the case file, Sherry Washington said she did not have any record of the client paying her for legal work, and in the other case, she claimed she had a serious car accident and sustained a concussion that caused her failure to communicate. But that's not all. The file shows the state bar earlier disciplined Washington five different times, <laughs> dating back to 2011. Five different, listen, man. What happens when three strikes are out? Like, especially for a judge. <laughs> yeah, but not, not in the modern era. That don't matter no more. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. I mean, you're only entrusted with, you know, judging the Tonight, lives of your fellow citizens. Investigation into mm -hmm. a candidate running to be a superior court judge. Now, she's been fired from the bench before. Reveal investigator Andy Parati spoke to the candidate who believes her legal problems make her a better candidate for the job. When I was in South Fulton, I would say three E's all the time. Right? At nearly every online campaign event, Tiffany Sellers boasts about her platform she calls the three E's. The court should be efficient, effect effective, and operate in excellence. Sellers says she plans to turn that motto into her mission if elected as a Fulton County Superior Court judge. But a reveal investigation uncovered the judicial candidate has a long history of legal problems of her own. Now, you, you want me to hear you, so you got to raise your voice up so that I can hear you. About two years ago, Sellers served as the city of South Fulton's first chief magistrate court judge. At the time, it was the first judicial Dude, this system is terrifying. in the country Look at this. run by Christ. all African-American women. The picture of them together... <laughs> That's that DEI. That's that DEI in real time, my dude. dude. <laughs> that's fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the inmates are running the asylum here. She yeah, let yeah. everybody. She let yeah. everybody on a short bond, short bail. It's all good. Just go. And they always, they always get caught up. Like they never get away with it. They never get, they always get caught 100% of the time. About two years ago, Sellers served as the city of South Fulton's first chief magistrate court judge. At the time, it was the first judicial system in the country run by all African American women. The picture of them together a viral sensation. And I think it was the solicitor that walked into the meeting and she said, Oh, black girl magic. A short time later, reality uh, uh, shows wow. wow. I wanted to show people. <laughs> Yo. A short time later, <laughs> reality. Like, do we do we understand black girl magic. how bad that is? <laughs> and this is the norm. And it now, is. Though, it right? is literally magic. It's literally magic. Because they Rock uh, you to sleep with this bullshit. For example, ah, uh, ah, uh, remember what you said? You said something last. I, so I was at work and I listened to your last show, and you said something about liberal white women have chained the white man in order, to, in order to unleash this shit. And the problem is, is you know what the kryptonite is? The kryptonite is her because they have to figure out a way. It's a double fold for the white man. He has to unchain the liberal white woman, but he also has to fight the neoliberal judge who's on Black Girl Magic. It's like a concoction of terror. Right, right. <laughs> oh, Black Girl Magic. A short time later, <laughs> reality show producers started calling. I wanted to show people what grace and mercy and rehabilitation all look like. But <laughs> yeah, no way. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, oh, <laughs> <sighs> They're so predictable, man. Empty the prisons. Yeah. Calling. I wanted to show people what grace and mercy and rehabilitation all look like. But the TV show never took off, and her honeymoon on the bench was short lived. Less than a year later, city council fired her after staff complained she allegedly bullied them, something sellers denies. Let me be clear I am not a bully. Sellers <laughs> sued the city. Ultimately, that claim was settled uh, amicably out of court for a sum that I'm really, ple really pleased with.
While Sellers is happy with her taxpayer-funded settlement, there are plenty of people displeased with her for failing to pay her debts. Since 2014, court records show she's been sued at least 10 times for not paying court reporters, contractors, and personal loans, wow. totaling $144,000. That includes breaking a lease in this office building. To me, that's a pattern of bad decision making. William Perry is the executive. You, you think? <laughs> you think? Yeah, honestly. Any other patterns you can discern? Thanks, Mr. Glider. Grand scale? But look, though, but look, though they, they chose like the most whitest of white dudes to say that. And ain't nobody going to respect them for saying that shit. They're still going to side for her. Because like he's calling her out on legitimacy. He's calling her out for legitimate and personal things. loans totaling $144,000. That includes breaking a lease in this office building. To me, that's a pattern of bad decision making. William Perry is the executive director of Georgia Ethics Watchdogs. Judges need to make very good decisions. So, I <laughs> yeah, this basic <laughs> shit. of course, nigga, of course they should most make good decisions. <laughs> Yo, okay, man. I think uh, it's important for the people of Fulton County when they're voting to understand the bad decisions that have been made by this candidate. How did that happen? I will tell you, Andy, life, right? I have made no qualms that I'm not, I wasn't born privileged. Uh, in 2013, I- Oh my God. That's exactly like Fanny. She wasn't born privileged. And I bet you if we look into her background, she was born privileged. She wasn't born privileged. Yikes. Yeah, her parents, went to, her parents went to Howard. She went to HBCU. She did all right. All Jack right. and Jill. Yeah. No qualms that I'm not, I wasn't born privileged. Uh, in 2013, I was laid off. Unfortunately, like so many Americans now, particularly with this COVID pandemic. Sellers also yo, filed yo, for Chapter uh, 13 bankruptcy. She said I was laid off. Uh, she said she was laid off in 2013. That was a decade ago. What is she talking about? <laughs> 2013 with more than a half a million dollars in debt. I am in works with all of those creditors to work those out, uh, to pay those back. Uh, I fully intend to pay my debts. Sure, people make one or two mistakes in their past, but when you've got 10 plus lawsuits and things like that against you, I think you need to get your own house in order before you try to get a job, the job as a judge in a courthouse. How's she going to do that without stealing from disagree. the court system? You know, I think what we need are we need judges who've lived life. A candidate courting voters for a powerful position. I am running to be your next Fulton County Superior Court judge. Who hopes her flawed financial record will be an asset rather than a liability. Despite her personal financial issues, Seller says when she was chief magistrate in South Fulton, she operated a budget with a more than $200,000 surplus. The majority of cases that go through Superior Court in Fulton County are felony criminal cases. Because Sellers has never been a prosecutor, she's never tried a felony case. She says her time on the... <laughs> she's, she's never tried a felony she's case. She's there strictly to let the bro you know, son teens off and shit. Yeah. They're doing community service under her. <laughs> they, they, they have to wreck 